Kevin Costner's wife is very, very young. Without question, the name Kevin Costner is recognizable to many Americans, especially since he's been in the limelight for decades. Like many high-profile men, he has the luxury and the pizzazz to date significantly younger women who become enamored with his charm, money, and fame. He's married twice, with his second marriage being to Christine Baumgartner in 2004. She's a model, and her personal relationship with Kevin Costner has an amusing source. Christine is not so young by today's standards, but they tied the knot way back in 2004, so she was only 30 years old at the time. Considering that Kevin was born in 1955, the difference is 19 years. She still looks great, thanks to both her genes and regimen that preserves her beauty for public work. So having her standing beside Kevin Costner still makes him look like a celebrity rolling in good fortune. Their private life is more than show. They've loved each other very much, and the couple has three children. Their youngest daughter was born in 2010. This is very impressive for a man who already had four other children because of previous relationships. Since their relationship has not gone downhill, it's apparent that Kevin is pretty good at entertaining women he's tied the knot with. The couple still looks great together, although the age gap is not disguised at all. Background Story of Kevin Costner Most of Kevin's fame is due to the film industry. Before he got into cinema, he had no extraordinary background but instead distinguished himself because of his initiative and handsome appearance. He had an active enough childhood, full of sports and fraternities, and his degree in college was set for the business world. Like many success stories in the entertainment industry, he took a huge gamble in paying for acting classes and neglecting his marketing job. Accounting for Kevin Costner's face is a complex story. His father's background is German. But at the same time, his parentage includes genes from all corners of the British Isles. Some of his ancestors were Welsh and even Irish. Kevin is athletic and the beneficiary of good health. For most of his life, Kevin kept his face reasonably groomed, the exception being for westerns and for appearances where he wanted a rugged stubble. Kevin insists that his deep kinship for cowboy legends was cemented at the age of seven when he watched the movie How the West Was Won. It gave him archetypes of tough men overcoming difficult odds. It also gave him a love of everything Western. It's just like boys to love adventure and male success, as well as exercises of power and bravado. It might also help that he was living in California, a place specifically built for prairie types. As for the rest of his formative minor years, he had some early exposure to art in the form of piano lessons and singing in the Sunday choir. He played football, a rugged sport, and so had a fair amount of exposure to both intense exercise and expressions of masculinity. He also got to experience the lifestyle of the footloose ranger, firsthand as a teenager, mostly because his father uprooted several times for professional reasons. This means that teenage Kevin often lost his friends and had to experience life as an outsider. It does matter that he attended a university, since it gave him exposure to the minds of upward-bound individuals. His degree at the university in Fullerton was a BA in marketing and finance. It seemed reasonable on the surface, and his own dad was engaged in a very sensible occupation as an electrician. It was his nature to seek out a more exciting and personally expressive occupation, and he ended up developing an interest in acting during his senior year at university. As mentioned, Kevin Costner has had two spouses in his life. His first marriage was to Cindy Silva, who was an actor who played Cinderella at Disneyland theme park. Although the fine details are lost to history, her beauty and exposure to fanciful things made her an attractive spouse for someone who had suddenly become smitten with the power and spirituality of acting. They had their honeymoon, and he still had not revealed in detail his enthusiasm for the limelight. Shortly after his honeymoon with Cindy, he ran into an established actor by the name of Richard Burton. They were all on a plane flight and apparently first class as they had the chance to encounter a celebrity. Richard Burton, in fact, had purchased several seats simply to prevent strangers from crowding around and gawking at him. Kevin managed to talk to the celebrity about his interest in acting and how to avoid unwanted attention. Richard basically encouraged confident non-concern, and it was this chance encounter that helped spur Kevin into acting classes. It most certainly broke the ice with his wife, who apparently was also stunned to have met a famous person. Kevin decided to take full-time acting lessons while supporting himself with any reasonable job he could encounter. 
Cindy supported him because she saw his enthusiasm for the profession and also because she'd been impressed by meeting Richard Burton. In truth, Kevin Costner ended up having to sacrifice his career as a conventional businessman because of his fascination with acting. He used his salary from his marketing job to support acting classes, which ultimately means that his heart and mental attention was in something other than his desired profession. He lost his marketing career after only 30 days and instead chased sources of income that helped to support his ambitions. The idea of Kevin Costner on a fishing boat or in a freight truck might seem amusingly appropriate or ironic. Fame and Many Films Kevin Costner had a long record of starring or else being a significant actor in films spanning decades. He apparently benefited from connections he made in classes through his fraternity and through college contacts because he was able to take on a leading role in a film without having an extensive prerequisite portfolio. He became a main character of Sizzle Beach, USA as early as the winter of 1978, the same year that he graduated college. Other films of his early career include The Touch, which is a 1983 film, and also he was the frat boy number one in Night Shift. His appearance was brief but impactful and helped to solidify his role as one of dramatic surprise. He had several minor roles in the same year, including a commercial for an early Apple computer and for the movies Table for Five and Testament. His role in the film The Big Chill was cut, but he was promised another role by the director, Lawrence Kasdan. The movie that made his career was the western flick Silverado. Although this was in 1985 and two decades past the golden era of western films, it had enough charisma and action to turn Kevin Costner into a famous star. The same year, he had a role in less important films, Fandango and American Flyers. Kevin's public profile rose higher with more important films such as The Untouchables and No Way Out. Since Kevin knew quite a bit about sports, he was the star of two baseball movies, Old Durham and Field of Dreams. Kevin Costner loved the film industry so much that he used his growing wealth to found his own studio and to direct films where he could choose or else strongly influence the script. This was apparently successful as Dances with Wolves was a success. At the same time, he continued to be a star in other people's projects and his career continued with great acclaim until the end of the 1990s. The film Message in a Bottle was mixed in its reception and so impacted Kevin's profile. All this was great success for him and he focused heavily on his films and less on his personal life. There was no great interruption in his profession that made him less attractive as a husband, as Cindy and Kevin ended up splitting in 1994 when he was at the height of his own creativity. It might be assumed that the stresses and estrangement of being so busy is what caused a strain in their private marriage. Kevin's career was not devastated by his divorce, and in fact, he was dating other celebrity women within a year or two. He actually had his fourth child with Bridget Rooney as they had a relationship without getting married. He had brief relationships with Bridget Cunningham and supermodel Al McPherson. Between the late 1990s and the year 2000, he was in relationship limbo but began dating his eventual second wife at the turn of the millennium. He ended up dating a model and bag designer, Christine Baumgartner. She resembles other celebrity marriages where a less important celebrity ends up being an attractive asset to a more prestigious celebrity who's also significantly older than herself. Her career benefits from being married to a famous husband, while her beautiful looks and model status is an excellent accompaniment to Kevin Costner in public. Aside from this practicality, the couple seems to get along very well. Life as a husband to a younger woman Without question, Kevin has the advantage of being able to go through marriage to a younger woman twice. He was able to have three children with his first wife and ended up having three children with his second wife. They definitely spend a lot of time in each other's company, and neither professional stress that the challenge of raising children seemed to stress the relationship to the breaking point. As Kevin has kept himself healthy in spite of his advancing age, his physique is a mitigable issue. Being a professional actor, Kevin Costner has a masculine persona and is both witty and refined. He has all the advantages that being a mature male provides, and his marriage is likely stable due to his maturity. His first marriage was closer to his age, and they grew up together in a real sense. This means that old fights and tensions dragged on while a new relationship with a young woman was free of this baggage. An experienced male might avoid falling into the same holes as before. It definitely helps that his second wife has a more active role in public life. 
Christine still looks great on a red carpet and has plenty of experience with publicity events, being a public relations organizer for her own products. Having someone with as much business experience as himself is likely a huge asset to Kevin's career. The relationship might have begun because Kevin realized the usefulness of dating a businesswoman, and useful relationships do have the opportunity to flourish. Christine is a minor celebrity compared to her husband. By herself, she might have earned as much as a million dollars through her own business dealings. It's like a CEO marrying his secretary because she's enamored with his power and his potential to elevate her upward. Being a successful and prolific cinema magnate, Kevin Costner is worth at least $250 million. The gap in economic worth is very apparent. Christine actually began her career as a model, working for other people in order to gain public exposure. Although she had a degree from a prestigious university, success on the catwalk is not necessarily dependent on higher education, and she did not initially gain the publicity and economic success that she wanted. Since she had trouble getting work purely as a model, she turned to designing and selling handbags as an evolution of her career. It's apparent that her willingness to branch out and seek new assets helped the leader to Kevin Costner. The evidence does not lend itself to the assumption that she's interested in money and success primarily. She actually met Kevin while he was already married to his first wife, and then they met again later on. The couple almost never got married because Kevin disliked the possibility of having more children, and he had to agree to this before the marriage could happen.